Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities in Miniatures. It's Friday, which hopefully you've realized by now is always going to be some sort of obscurity in literature. And I hope at this point I haven't steered you wrong in any situations, but today we bring a real gem of a book, and that is Howling at the Moon by... Uh, crap. Jacob Rosalski? Jakub? Mr. Rosalski, that I can handle. You might have seen his work because I know I've seen it all over the internet prior to Scythe coming out from, uh, what is it, Stonemaier, Jamie Stagmeyer's gaming company. Anyway, I know Scythe, when it first came out, was a big major usage of Mr. Rosalski's artwork. And honestly, I kept looking at it thinking, oh, you know, this stuff looks super familiar. And I don't know why. So interestingly enough, the book is actually bilingual in both English and in Polish. I can't read Polish. Maybe you can. And one of the things about Rosalski's artwork that I really, really dig is just the epic sense of scale. And I know he's got a thing about, you know, just tiny humans and large looming presences, especially upon the battlefield. I get very shades of Shadows of the Colossus when I look at a lot of his stuff. And a bit of War of the Gargantuans. Just like all the little boats getting wrecked as the Titans duke it out. The thing I really appreciate also about this book is there's just an interesting use of color and mediums. You can see he was experimenting. A lot of this is around mid... 2010s, 2015, 16, 17. Some of this stuff might be familiar to you guys, but then it's when we get into his world of 1920 plus that things start to get really familiar. And it's fun to me because I grew up, my grandmother had a lot of paintings and books on paintings with a very similar style and look to it. She was originally from Poland and had a lot of art by Polish authors. It seemed, or at least that's where I seem to have gotten the familiarity with it. But they're just, they're the kind of paintings that when you look at them, you know, they, they really are telling a story, kind of makes you think. Got the guy talking with the woman down here. Cavalry in the background. I appreciate that and enjoy the very slice of life look. And juxtaposed with all of the crazy steampunk tech. These, I feel, are absolutely from Scythe. I love these farmland scenes with just the mechs stomping around in the background. I know some of this was the basis for a video game. Iron... something. Iron Storm or Iron Rain, I don't remember which. But again, I just, I really dig how every painting really is just kind of telling its own story. And I'm just kind of jumping around, skipping photos. Because obviously I don't want to spoil everything for you. As tempting as it may be. A very effective use of the environments as well. You know, very cool, very hazy, very misty, but then, you know, you get into these very fall-like autumnal colors. And again, even at the most simplistic, the most natural looking, you still have, like, these steam ships floating around in the back. It's literally an airship. Okay. Also, at times, r reminds me of the artist, I can't think of the name, the Tales from the Loop artist, whose books I don't think I've actually shown on here yet, have I? So, yeah, if you're into 1920s Victorian farmland era stuff with giant spider mechs, I don't think you can really go wrong with this book. There is more to it, but there is a lot of that. And I mean, obviously, considering that a lot of this was the basis for Scythe and its whole style, that's really not surprising. And there's just a great 
My, my grandmother actually enjoyed flipping through this book. Other grandmother. The non-Polish grandmother, but she always was a bit of an artist. And enjoyed colors. In the back we have... The Apocalypse section. Fun stuff. So yeah, while the bulk of the book is made up with the 1920 plus, you do get into these kind of end of World War II. Spider on the Roof. Okay, this is titled September 39. Okay, I get where they're going with it. Then we get into the Wolfpack 1863 section. Things are a bit more close and personal, but again, you have that effective use of heavy shading as things are coming out of the mist. Careful with those wolves. I don't think there's a wolf in that one. Of course, I'm not showing you the whole picture either. I don't know why this one has always reminded me of something that Clint Langley would have painted. Maybe it's the, the photo realistic look of the background with her and all her fancy gear. Gives me Commissar Kane vibes. It's Dark Souls-ish. Very severe winter. Yes, it is, because it's on both pages. We get a bunch of random eclectic stuff into the back. 1410. Furry Demon is the title of this painting. Warrior Yoga. And then in the back we have a tutorial section where he goes into how he sets a lot of these paintings up. I'll let you read that on your own. Where the pagan temple had stood. Lots of effective use of grays. But I'll let you enjoy reading that on your own. And then he talks about the morning hunt. I think I showed you guys that. And at the very end of the entire book, we have a quick little interview with the author slash artist. And again, it is bilingual much like the rest of the book in English and Polish. So if either of those are languages that you speak, you might want to check it out. And finally, the author at work there. So cool book, especially if you enjoy the steampunk style. If you like giant things looming in the background, epic battles, and all sorts of steamy, diesel-y, punky stuff, I don't think you can go wrong with this book, especially if you're a fan of those genres or the games that have inspired them. I swear I saw something about it in the beginning. I thought I saw it here. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it was in the intro section to World War One thing. I swear I read it. Where was it? It's either Iron Storm or Iron Rain. I don't remember which, and it's really driving me nuts. And I can't finish this video until I double check it. I don't know. Never mind. I'll put it in the comments. Anyways, uh, I will put a link down to Amazon. Hopefully it's not ridiculously expensive. I didn't check ahead of time, but you've been warned, just in case. <sighs> with that said, this has been High Lord Tamberlane with Obscurities and Miniatures. Saying thanks for watching, and we will see you back here soon. Bye-bye.